Hey guys, it's Nikki with FM 99. I am here with Peanut from 311. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm I'm back in my back in my element. I'm on a tour bus. Heck yes, that makes me so happy. It makes me really happy too. I didn't I didn't realize how much I missed it because I was having so much fun at home, you know, hanging with the kids and everything. Yeah. Like about this time last summer, I was like, God, I miss something. There's like a there's this flavor that I haven't tasted in so long that I'm so used to tasting, and it's travel and seeing happy faces and playing obnoxiously loud music through yeah. an, an obnoxiously amount of you know an obnoxious amount of speakers so it's nice yeah. to get back to this normal it's like a piece of your soul missing i would imagine yes something like that yeah so your touring just kicked off uh what's 21st of this month right yeah we this did our fir first show on saturday how was that that first show back in front of a live audience what was that like it was great. They were super loud. It was it was like uh, it was like South America loud when we got done with the first few songs. You know, it was just it was like a you know we were all going through a release at the same time, which is really pleasant. Yeah, I bet. You know, I, I have said a couple times that you know it's one of those things that I feel like everybody's going to remember when. You know, you're going to remember that first live show back. Um, yeah. and I imagine you guys will too. Definitely, definitely. And I see tons of fans being like, you know, the last show that I saw before the world stopped was 311 Day in Vegas. So yes. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see you guys first again when you guys get out. Spoiled with uh, fantastic dedicated fans. Yeah, heck yeah. And you're going to be here in Virginia Beach on September 2nd. I am super stoked about that. Land of Pharrell. Yeah. <laughs> That's Pharrell City. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> so cool. Yes. Well, we're we're excited to see you on our stage. So <laughs> being off, you know, off the road for you know a year and a half or whatever, as you guys were getting ready for this tour, how do you plan your set list? Um, we wanna we wanna surprise people. I think on this summer tour, I mean, certainly more than we've been doing over the last couple of years. Uh, last couple of years, the the sets have been shorter, and we've been co-headlining with either the Offspring or Dirty Heads. So okay. it's um, you know we're doing that kind of you know what if there's what if there's someone brand new in the audience kind of I I think paranoid kind of mindset. So we got to play like all the songs people know, so they won't forget who we are when we're on stage with this big giant logo behind us. Yeah. But, but we're we're mixing it up more on this tour, and uh, and yeah, it's it's, it's I mean, we got a got a two hundred and eighty some odd song uh, music book, and we should play as much of it as we can while we're capable and there's an audience supporting us to be creative. So um, I think bands are frequently their their worst enemy, and when we're making set lists, um, just the more eclectic, the more genre, uh, career spanning um, we can do, the the better the set is. And I think the more fun the audience will have. Yeah, I bet. And exciting for you guys, really. Yeah, and we learned that through the live streams, um, playing what we think are deep cuts, but this is how the audience, a majority of the audience or what whatever, has been listening to it in album form for decades in some cases so these songs that we shy away from playing live are favorites to fans and we've got no idea until we air them out live so just you know uncovering those those ideas and those set list ideas is is just uh, the band being self-aware and uh, always being on the path to improvement yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, speaking of that, when you guys were doing these live stream shows from a studio last year, um, you know, you played music, like you said, you don't typically play live and you're you're not playing to anybody really. Like, how did you keep the energy while you were doing that? Uh, we've done enough TV and enough videos that we can we can put on that that, you know, I, I know what this is supposed to look like. Hat yeah. and uh, and and just just think about it, you know, like 
I know I'd be excited to see, you know, the, the Deftones while I was on my couch at home with my family and not being able to go to a show. You know, so, so yeah, it was an opportunity to just have fun. And I think that's something we're pretty good at, whether there's an audience or, or not. But it sure makes it easier when there is. And, uh, you know, like reading the chat and seeing where people were from. And it was a different kind of interaction all the way around. But, but pleasant no matter what. And, you know, if you walk away a sweaty mess, you probably had a good time. And, Heck so yeah. We pulled that we pulled that off all six times. Yeah, absolutely. So are you is there something that you're more excited for being back out on the road or something different that maybe was lost on you before or you didn't think about before? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I really I watch the show as much as I perform within the show. So um just the you know, I, I, I'm the guy who wakes up early and watches the, the crew load in and put everything together. And then uh, I'm, I'm out usually pretty early on sound checks and I'll stay late and I soak up the whole thing. And I have for quite a long time really enjoyed all the, the details of this, of this kind of, uh, you know, the circus like lifestyle. So yeah, I, I missed, I missed a ton. And then, uh, of course, people's reactions. Um, but but that's also why we do it too, is because there is so much, in, so many interesting things going on. And you know, we'll pack it up tonight and take it to Maine, and you know, see you guys soon. And it's just, it's it's fun solving all these problems uh, with people that you like traveling with, and uh, and putting out positive music um, for decades now, and knowing that the audience is there to kind of be hugged in that that way and then also like i said like have a have a collective release is uh you know it's all it's all so much fun you know if you haven't seen the show you've got to see the show and if you haven't seen a show in a year and a half and you're ready to see a show you know there's there's lots and lots of good acts still still out there who haven't canceled yet and cross our fingers we'll we'll uh, keep going as much as we can i was gonna say don't don't say the word yet <laughs> <laughs> Let's just cut that out altogether. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all it's all kind of isolating the the lifestyle unto itself. So hopefully we can uh, use that as like a, a ace in our pocket. So, um, but I you know I've got friends that are like, hey, let's let's link up and let's let's hook up. And it's like, ah, I want to, but management says I can't. I got to keep my keep my interaction down to a minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that so that yet can be taken out of the equation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you guys have been doing this um, for a minute. Um, it starts in Omaha, Nebraska. A couple of the guys go to LA to make it big. No plan B. Come back. Chad goes to a University of Nebraska. You're still in high school. Oh yeah. So number one, how do you guys meet and say let's make music together? Um, it, it happened a couple of different ways. There was some like interconnectivity going on. I mean, I knew SA since I was probably about 12. Um, we hung out in the same circles and uh, we had friends that I was in, in a band with. And then he went to uh, the University of Nebraska at Lincoln uh, and was roommates with Chad. Okay. And and was like, you need to meet this bass player, but he's he's really young. You know, I was like 15, 14 or 15 at the time. And um and me and Chad started playing together and um and then we had a little three piece that was actually three eleven for a second. Um I did a, a talent show um before that and then linked up with Chad and was you know, I attached my cart to him as to throw away the key and never be apart from him. Um, and then Nick, Nick was taking off. He was going to Germany to, um, I don't know, he was going to Germany. And, and he came back after that didn't go the way that he wanted. And he knew that me and Chad were still playing. So uh, Nick came in 
and um and yeah it just kind of went went from there um we all kind of knew each other but we needed to get in the room together and play music together and, and start this journey yeah and now 30 years later you guys are all still together i mean that's that's more than most marriages out there <laughs> a lot more <laughs> yeah facts. yeah yeah it's a trip it's, it's not easy uh, we're all very different um, but we started like that, you know, we didn't, we weren't, we weren't like, you know, all the Spider-Men pointing, pointing at each other, like, hey, you're, you know, I thought I was the only one. We're all really different and we continue to be really different. And if we use that as our strength and we find the common ground that, that helps us stay interested in what we're all, you know, trying to accomplish, then we've, we've got a lot of ground still to cover even 31 years into it, so. It's all really fun, and uh, I like the way everyone thinks in the band about music, and I love uh, thinking about what we're going to come up with next. Yeah, heck yeah. I mean, you, yeah, it's 30 years. It's just, it's amazing. Okay, so you guys started doing these cruises. Yes. Are, are, are we going back? Do you think they'll start up again? I've seen a couple start up. Yeah, I mean, yep. we're, we've, we've talked about if that's not going to happen because it is so much fun um we were going to do like destination shows yeah um do three days in paradise somewhere either arctic or tropical paradises <laughs> can like i fun. vote for tropical or that's all right. you, you guys pick wherever yeah, you, you want to go yeah okay so cruises don't go back up destination um love that idea because obviously well loved i mean every you know, I haven't had the pleasure of being on one yet, but you know, you, every picture you see, I mean, it's just a sea, literally a sea of people, you know, on on these cruise ships. So, yeah, there's been some amazing moments on there too. Things that were unique to my career and the, the band's career um, that you know we wouldn't we'd have never experienced if um, six man the production company out of Atlanta, Georgia, excuse me. <clears throat> um, if they hadn't approached us and thought that we were a good fit for the cruise model, um, it would have never happened. We would have never came up with the idea ourselves. You know, what what kind of audacious egomaniacs think that they can sell out a cruise ship, you know, starting from such humble beginnings. But yeah we pulled it off lots and lots of times and it's so much fun. My dad comes out. Uh, my, my dad's a sucker for cruise ships and traveling and, and wearing t-shirts that say that he's my dad. So, <laughs> so he's, it's, it's a perfect environment for him. And, uh, and yeah, just like, uh, there's this bridge in Tampa, this giant, giant bridge that you have to cross to get into town. I, I, I think and that we went under, of course, being in, happened like right when we were starting playing you know you, the the audience saw it come in and they were kind of growling and you know hooting and hollering and then right when we played the first note we like went under the bridge and it was it was super cool and then we almost died by being struck by lightning one time but we don't have to have details about that super scary oh. loudest yeah. noise i've ever heard i pretty much jumped into nick's arms it hit the ship no, it was it was two hundred feet off the off the deck of the ship, but it was close. Yeah, that's that's a little too close. <laughs> and super super loud. And I grew up, you know, next to an air force base, and I'm in a rock band, and it was the loudest noise. I w I never want to hear again. <laughs> Did you guys pack it up after that? Or you're like, all right, well, it's not gonna hit the same place twice. Let's just keep playing. No, you you've got to cancel after that that moment. We got it. Yeah, we got a few songs in on that. It yeah, was, it was it was time to leave. It wasn't safe for anybody on the on the deck of the boat. Yeah, and you know they all would have stayed too. So that was probably the right call. They would have. They would have. So you guys have this huge, you know, I mean, it's cult following. You know, people that have been with you for thirty years. Um, do you feel like? you guys don't get the accolades that all of these people, you know, think you deserve. I mean, we think you deserve. 
Uh, I think we get more than we deserve. You know, I mean, it'd be nice to be uh, or or to have been media darlings in this, you know, whatever experiment that we're in. But that's a lot of that's a lot of um, pressure too. You know, you got to please yeah. people who who you know kind of control your career in a in a certain way. And we've been left alone, like by and large. Uh, by the media just to write our own story. So um, we can pat ourselves on the back with for successes and we can regroup and be disgruntled about any air quote mistakes that we make. You know, it's really it's really just about having fun and, and enjoying ourselves and and making it last as long as possible. So, you know, if people want to support that as an audience and and not, you know, like the the media then it's actually a really sweet spot. You know, it's it's really a great place to be because if the media controls it, then it can get out of control. Yeah. And I see I see, you know, Billie Eilish saying how she kinda hates it, you know, kinda hates the position that she's in because of having so much success. And I can't imagine that you know i mean i can i can i can put myself there if i if i have to but i haven't had to deal with any of that in in our career even selling millions of albums it's like i can go to the movies i can i can get a sand sand wedge i can i can do anything i want and not be overwhelmed by attention because the the you know the the microscope is is so focused on what i'm doing as an individual or as a group, so yeah, I, I love our I love our little bit of accolades. Um, it, it's all about the show, you know. That's yeah. what our first that's what our first label told us. Like in one of our first meetings with uh, any record label, uh, the people at Capricorn in Nashville were like, "You're gonna go on the road, and you know, and that's 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 what's gonna happen, and you're gonna be in control of your career." I'm like, that sounds great. Like yeah. that's what we were already good at was putting on shows, and if you like it, great. And if you don't, you know, go go see somebody else next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. No, I. That's an incredible way of looking at it. And honestly, I, I hadn't thought of it that way. But you're right. I mean, you know, you you guys, I think, have you know one one of the reasons. You know, you're you're in the space that you're in. Maybe is is because you're not under that microscope. And I, I love that. Yeah, and and we don't we don't really ask for too much attention. I mean, it's not we're we're kind of keeping our heads on our shoulders. And yeah. you know, I don't mean to call Scott Wyland out, but you know his his antics kind of got in the way of the music. And yeah. and over this year and a half, I was revisiting some of their songs as I was playing every bass line I could think of on YouTube, and filling my head full of you know 90s and 70s and 80s <laughs> music so much fun and playing some um playing some uh stone tumble pilot songs and just god they're so cool i mean the, the brothers were such are such good writers and scott was such an amazing singer it's like yeah. i forget how good the music is because there was such a focus on on what was he going to do next you know was it was it going to be successful or was it going to be you know horrible so yeah I'm, I'm happy we've just been kind of left alone and haven't gone out of our way to make headlines positive or negative it's just all about the show and all about the music yeah absolutely yeah. No, i love that um so my last question is your last album came out in 2019 Are you guys working on new music no we're not and 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 we should be playing more of those songs off of voyager i think um yeah we're we're enjoying just being back playing live um we had to take a break from each other anyway during this time so it wasn't really fruitful for for writing um but um yeah we've got we've got ideas here and there i know chad was working on um chad was working on some electronic stuff which he's got he's got a ton you know he's got this library of music that no one's ever heard that I know he's still working on, which is pretty amazing because he's yeah. super. Um, then he said he was going to move over and start writing some 311 stuff, which I was like, okay, that sounds good to me. Um, and I've got a few things here and there. Me and Nick worked on one song during the 
pandemic and then uh he helped me write a song for my wife for her birthday um which was fun something i hadn't ever done before and yeah it was like our 20th anniversary and you know it's time to do it's time to do something special and yeah i was you know i i, I had all the time in the world to to do something creative so it was it was really fun and yeah i i, I can see that um the machine gearing up uh after we get off off the road and yeah. uh, kind of think about what's next and uh you know maybe an ep or maybe an album who knows but yeah voyager wasn't that long ago and as a 30 plus year old band we don't have to be in in any rush to make new music and we won't take that pressure not not from <laughs> you not from nobody <laughs> fair enough pressure removed yeah i want to hear new music too believe me but yes but yeah pressure doesn't help <laughs> no you're right it doesn't just forget i asked just forget. <laughs> Well, we are really, really excited to see you guys in just a couple of short weeks and uh, enjoy your tour until then. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you here. Can't wait. At the Veterans United Home Loans Amphitheater. That's exactly right. Yep. Right here in Virginia Beach. Oh, can't wait. Can't wait. I will see you there. It's been a pleasure talking with you. It's been a pleasure talking to you too. You guys stay safe out there. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. All right.